Beware the Ides of March. Especially if you're an Oklahoma, Miami, or NC State fan. Hello, HQDs, and welcome to your Thursday night March Madness tip-off edition of HQ. A lot of folks getting mad today after the first round of the tourney, including yours truly. Really thought this was the year Iona would run the table. Will you advance past Q1 tonight? Let's see what the old magic basketball has to say. All signs point to yes, queen. Guess this ball rolled in from Broad City. And we're about to roll into HQ, the live mobile game show where you answer questions to win cash. I'm the guy in the sports jacket with a busted bracket, Coach Scott Krzyzewski, coming to you live from the greatest city on earth, the city that never sleeps, New Rochelle, New York. Going man to man with all 886,000 plus of you, including Cameron, MBR, Ali Heath, Patrick Doherty, Sean Freeman, the Melon Lord, Lauren Schroer, Four Krusties and Mommy Nana. Some of you having birthdays in there. Happy birthday. Is this your first time coming off the bench for HQ? Are you gonna be a PTP or baby? I'm gonna ask you 12 questions. You have a 10 second shot clock to answer each one. Get them all right and it's your one shining moment. You're taking home our cash prize of 2,500 Dipsy Doos, 2,500 Dunkaroos, 2,500 Dick Vital approved dollars, baby. You can buy round trip airfare to San Antonio for the final four with that kind of money. And while you're there, uh, don't forget to check out that, uh, that thing. I think it's like a museum or a, a fort. I can never remember. Ah, eh, forget it. I hope you're celebrating the Ides of March accordingly with a shot of Caesar dressing chased by an orange Julius. Duh. Do you have your Ides on the prize? A2 HQ Tay? We have over 950,000 of you in the game right now. It is time to quiz with me and get some money. Time to get down to the nitty gritty. Time to get this show on the road. Cumero, numero uno. What is a photo you take of yourself commonly known as? Selfie, Renaissance masterpiece, or narcissisto? You know, my friend, Chris Kelly said it best. All jokes aside, if you ever posted a selfie, you're deranged. But if you tap selfie here, you're correct. Despite what Paris Hilton claims, Dave Attell invented the selfie on Insomniac. We all know that. And 955,939. New Kimuro numero uno. What about Kimuro numero two? No. As the old saying goes, when all you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a what? Birthday cake, Thor, or nail. This is known as the law of the instrument or Maslow's hammer. When the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And you're living at the bittersweet motel. 902,321 getting it right. By the way, if all you have is a hammer, you should also probably buy a proper toolbox. 902,321 hitting the nail on the head for Q3. Which of these is not a nickname for the NCAA Division I basketball tournament? March Madness, Big Dance, or SummerSlam? Eh, honestly, I think this tournament's overrated. I'm looking ahead to the real action. The women's NIT, baby. East Tennessee State's going all the way. Lady Buccaneers, but this is happening right now. Are you paying attention? College basketball fans are going mad for the big dance, but SummerSlam is a wrestling event. It's, it's also not summer yet, so how could the tournament be SummerSlam? SummerSlam's your answer, 573,049. Slamming this one down, dancing on to Q4. Tricking someone in order to achieve a goal is an act of what? Centrifuge, calcifuge, or subterfuge? It's also just an act of being a jerk. A calcifuge is a type of plant. A centrifuge is a type of equipment that puts an object in rotation around a fixed axis, like when you get your blood separated. But trickery, chicanery? Listen all y'all, it's a subterfuge. Subterfuge is your answer, 417,175. They must have aced their SATs. That's some sneaky business there. A clever ruse. Enough with this sophistry, let's get to Q5. What are the two cities in Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities? Manchester and Liverpool, Rome and Madrid, or London and Paris? It was the best of Qs, it was the worst of Qs. 
This beloved and much adapted novel is set during the French Revolution and written by one of England's most famous authors, so it's hardly surprising the events would unfold in a London and Paris. Those are the cities, 240,227 are my H cuties. Getting this right and moving on to Q6. I scared the dickens out of 170,000 of you there. You're out. But one more question. Q6, a whooper. Oh, which of these birds can fly? A whooper swan, cassowary, or emu? I was trying to get my Les Mis together and I screwed it up. One Q more. Which of these birds can fly? You know, cassowaries look like living dinosaurs and they're very dangerous. They're one of a handful of birds known to actually have killed a human, but they won't be attacking from the air. They are flightless like emus stuck on the ground with the rest of us, but those swans can soar, baby. Those whooper swans, actually pronounce hooper swan if you want to be a real, you know, jerk about that. 105,321 getting it right, whooping it up to Q7. Whooper Swan, Hooper Swan. Q7, according to legend, what documents were once nailed to the door of the Wittenberg Church? Joan of Arc's diary, 95 Theses, or the Codex Hammer. And I'll say Wittenberg for, again, those real careful, pretentious people out there who want to make sure I pronounce everything right. The Wittenberg Church, because it's in Germany. This simple yet bold act changed the course of world history, started the Reformation period, and, is, and what is now known as Protestantism, Jay-Z had 99 problems, Question Mark and the Mysterians had 96 tears, but Martin Luther had 95 theses nailed to that church door, 96,021 getting it right, remembering your world history. I guess all Martin Luther had was a hammer, and it came in handy there. Q8, which of these is not a common English meaning of the Spanish word mañana, morning, tomorrow, or last night? Mañana. Manana by itself means tomorrow, tomorrow, I love ya, manana. But if you come across the phrase ana manana, chances are the speaker is discussing something happening in the morning. So morning's also correct, but if you try to use it to mean last night, usted es incorrecto, lo siento, which means last night is our answer, and 66,051 are singing last night. Or maybe not. The rest of you, hasta mañana to Q9. According to Emily Post, what is the only fork placed on the right side of the plate? Oyster fork, salad fork, or dessert fork? Emily Post, she knew what was up. Where to put your cutlery? Generally, forks hang a left. But an exception is made when shellfish is served. An oyster fork is placed on the right side of the plate, mixing with the spoon and knives. That's my right. You're, I'm trying to get to your right. That's over here. 23,837. Getting this one right. The rest of you saying, what the fork? Utensils living together? In sin, it's unholy, it's unnatural. You got shucked at Q9. Oysters and Oyster Bay do it. Q10, the word wisdom is often used as a term to refer to a group of what animal? Walrus, wolverine, or wombat? Wisdom. Yes. Alternate names for groups of this animal include colony or mob but wisdom is more fun and the preferred term for a group of these pudgy critters. They're herbivorous and crepuscular, cuddly but muscular. They're wombats. Had to have that. 6,779 getting this right here. Anya, I'm gonna say a savage question. Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, we just lost 17,000 plus of you there. Shaving off a whole lot, the vast majority, down to 6,779. It was a mortal wombat for the rest of you. Finish him! 6779 getting Q11. Which of these island groups is noteworthy for belonging to two different countries? St. Pierre and Miquelon, Diomede Islands, or Azores? Azores, Azores. Again, there are multiple ways to say some of these words. This pair of islands is located in the Bering Strait. Russia, the bigger country, gets the bigger slice. They get the bigger island. The US gets the other one, the little one. The gap between them is only two and a half miles, but it's separated by 21 hours because the international dateline splits them in half. I must be talking about the Diamine Islands. You know it now, right? After all those hints I was dropping. 2,913 know their obscure islands. By the way, when it gets cold in the winter, you can actually walk between the two Diamine Islands crossing from Russia to America. You can walk from Russia to America. 
an extra fact for you on this Thursday night. But it's time for Q12 right now. The final round for 2,913 HQs. It all boils down to this. $2,500 is at stake. Who don't got to dance? Who's making money move at Q12? Which of these was a real video game title featured in arcades in the 1980s? Pac-Man 3, Dig Dug 3, or Donkey Kong 3? There's a toughie for you. Unless you were a child of the 80s and you went to the arcade every Saturday, then, then this is your sweet spot. But for the rest of you, it might be a doozy. Similar in name to previous titles, the gameplay and storyline for this third edition was a radical departure from the previous ones. It featured Stanley, the exterminator, protecting his greenhouse from insects, stirred up by a giant ape taking up refuge there. Why? Why is there an ape in a greenhouse? If you sprayed insecticide on Donkey Kong in the 80s, you were playing Donkey Kong 3, and 1,349 of you are our winners tonight, baby! <laughs> Winner, winner, chicken teriyaki dinner. 1,349 of you not playing around with the quiz tonight. Not playing me for a fool. You got it right at Q12 and you win the money. $2,500 split 1,349 ways. So that gives us $1.85 or $1.86. Don't spend it all in one place, guys. Don't let it get to your head. Don't let this money change you, Funky Noah. Rob Maddox 33, JB123, Elbs11, nice kitty cat, C. Jameson, posterizing with Quiz Taps Porzinski on that one, Aaliyah Ross, a whole lot more of you, Quiz Taps Porzingus! That is our game tonight, folks. We are back tomorrow night, 9 p.m., of course, every night we are live at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. 3 p.m. Eastern Time as well, because tomorrow is the final weekday of the week, Friday, Friday. So we're back at 3 p.m. tomorrow. In the afternoon, 9 p.m. Eastern. You know how this is. You know what it is. I'm Scott Rogowski. I'm signing off for tonight. I will hasta you manana. And I'm reminding you that they say that nobody is perfect. Then they tell you practice makes perfect. I wish they'd make up their minds. Good night.